Hello everybody, I am GexUp and this is my second review on Gex3 Deep Cover Gecko made by Eidos Interactive and Crystal Dynamics released on March 3rd, 1999 for the Sony PlayStation. This is my favorite game from my childhood and my duty in reviewing this game is to inform and promote classic games such as this one. Gex3 Deep Cover Gecko is the direct sequel of Gex Enter the Gecko using the same formula from the last game, but is it better than its prequel? Let's find out. got his pants back. What's this? Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been handed some late breaking news. Uh. Special Agent Extra, head of the TV Terrorist Defense Unit, and star of many of my private dreams, is apparently missing. Oh, Jerry Springer! Agent Extra was last seen wearing 8-inch pumps and a red bathing suit. Her current whereabouts are unknown. Gex! Gex! Agent Extra! You poor kidnapped mace. Hey, Tiger. Guess where I am? Trapped in the media dimension. Rez is back and he's kidnapped me to get to you. He's attacking your secret island cave. Hey, speaking of secrets, you want to see my... Gex, quit clowning around and get me out of here. This place is giving me the creeps. Just dial me in. You are now being so connected, though. Gex, listen up. Keep your watch on at all times so I can call you. Meanwhile, get me out of here. I need you. Yeah, you and every other beautiful government agent trapped in a TV set. I'm on my way. Slamil, Slamazin, Officer Member Incorporated. Hey, that tingles. Let's get ready for the ultimate gecko weapon, baby! Yeah! Like I said, Gex 3 uses the same formula from Enter the Gecko. You enter a level, select any of the three missions given to you, and complete the mission in order to collect a remote. Yes folks, collecting remotes is the same object of the game as the last one, but only this time, Gex 3 is even more challenging than its prequel. The remote Gex collects is the only thing that uh, advances him to the next level in order to complete his mission. New collectibles are also in the game, like the bonus coins, which only helps you to get into bonus levels and symbols of the gecko's foot, which also means that if you collect enough of them, you get an extra hit point. The game still has the same controls for Gex. Tail whip, karate kick, jumping and tail bounce, crawling walls, uh, and eating bugs to regain your health. The new features in Gex 3 is that there are more power-ups than ever before. Now you can spit fire, ice, gain strength, and so much more. Also new to this series is that you'll have the ability to glide, depending on which costume Gex is wearing. But seriously, gliding is a huge improvement to the series. It's just so fun to slowly descend from one platform to another. Also new is uh, Gex can ride on certain vehicles such as a tank, camel, donkey, and a uh, snowboard. What's new to the series are the new characters. One you should all know is Agent Extra, played by Baywatch's Marlise Andrada, where you can constantly see cutscenes of her once you accomplish a level. There is also Gex's turtle butler Alfred, <coughs> Batman ripoff, that gives you hints or tips on your journey, and new playable characters such as Rex and Cuz that's only playable on the bonus levels. Gex isn't in the media dimension anymore. He's now teleported to a cave-like lair where he has television to teleport him, like in the media dimension, and begins his adventure rescuing Agent Extra and defeating Rez once again. Unlike the media dimension, the cave-like homeworld is dark. It reminds me a lot of <coughs> Batman, even though Gex is now a mansion owner. Wow, he got a mansion, a butler, and a huge cave that acts as if it was a media dimension, uh, and it was all earned after defeating Rez from Enter the Gecko? Lucky bastard. Anyway, like the last game, each level parodies a certain aspect of television or pop culture. There's a mystery channel, gangster TV, superhero show, fairytale TV, mythology network, Buccaneer Program, Western Station, Army Channel, Tut TV, Holiday Broadcasting, and the Anime Channel. I don't have to explain what each level is about because the title of each level says it all, and it fully captures what each level is parroting very well. If you thought Gex's levels need more originality, well you can't get parodies more original than this. It's more inventing than ever before. Back in 1999, us Gex fans were anticipated for the next big installment for Gex after Enter the Gecko. 
Gex 3 for the PS1 was released on March, and the N64 wasn't going to be released until August. But we couldn't get the game at the time because the game was rated T for the PS1, and we were still young. I was so disappointed that I couldn't get the game, so I decided to get a different game. On August of 1999, the N64 version of Gex 3 was released, and, and some of my friends who got the game got it because it was rated E, but they were screwed because just like the Gex 64, Gex 3 on the N64 did not have cutscenes, so not having Agent Extra is no buy for me. Then on Christmas of 99, I got Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko for the PS1. When I put the disc in and turned on my PlayStation 1, moments later, I was shocked on how Gex turned darker and more suggested than ever before. It took me time to get used to it, but the challenge and the difficulty was way harder than ever before, but yet I couldn't stop playing it because the game was just so awesome. The features that were put in this game really surprised me, making this another game that gave me a great childhood. Out of the way, Roseanne! Every bad aspect that I found in Enter the Gecko still prevails in Deep Cover Gecko, except for the cuckoo cuckoo sound effects. Let me first start out saying that I really dislike Alfred. This butler randomly appears out of nowhere giving you tips of how to finish a level or an obstacle, but sometimes he says random crap that suddenly goes too fast and really confuses me. Also, why are there bonus levels? Who even wants to play these levels? My guess is that Ido's Interactive thought that getting 100% in the last game was too easy, so they made it harder. Also, why are the only playable characters, Rez and Cuz, are only available in the bonus levels? Ido's Interactive could have made this game more interesting if they gave them personalities. One of my least favorite levels is the holiday broadcasting. I'm gonna be honest, I still say that the music for this level is just horrible. Fighting Santa and those little elves just feels awkward. For that being the first level of the, of the beginning of the game is not really a good idea. But the worst level in the entire game is the Mythology Network. I despise this level because all you ever did was to push heavy objects and smash broken surfaces with only pow the only power up of strength. It's a big hassle to be pushing heavy objects with a time limit, and when that timer goes out, you have to go back to that power-up and do it all over again. Plus, the enemies in the Mythology Network is uninspiring, tough to kill, and incredibly annoying. You guys remember that I said the Rocket Channel in Enter the Gecko was the worst level in the game? Well, I'd rather to play the Rocket Channel rather than playing the Mythology Network. Hey, monkey! Oh yeah, there are a lot of great parts in Gex 3. Thanks to Eidos and Crystal Dynamics for giving us cutscenes of Agent Extra every time we complete a level. Oh, don't you like you? Again, gliding is a huge improvement for the platformer series. Also, you can gain more hit points when you collect 25 Gecko Paw coins, which is one thing that's worth to collect. Dana Gould's wisecrack jokes for Gex were just as funny as the last installment. One of my favorite levels in the game is the pirate level because it really fit the energy of being in the pirate ship and it felt like I was in a Disney pirate ride. Another one of my favorite levels in the game is the fairy tale TV level because it felt like every fairy tale was combined into one. Jack and the Beanstalk, Three Little Pigs, and so many more that just felt as good as Toon TV level from Enter the Gecko. But, the best level in the entire game is the anime channel. It is so awesome just to see Gex dress up like a Mecha-like anime character, fighting anime schoolgirls and giant Mechas, which made the level so epic. The music in the anime channel is, in my opinion, one of my favorite music in the game. I just love that energetic feel of the song, and it felt just so great every time I play it. My complaints for battling Rez in Enter the Gecko is a lot better in Gex 3. Entering Rez's chamber up in space couldn't be more epic. You guys remember that I complained about the oxygen bar on the Rocket Channel level in Enter the Gecko? Well, there are no oxygen bars in, when you're in space. Awesome! The reward for defeating Rez in the, for the final time is for Gex to finally do it with Agent Extra. As I was saying, Extra, my love, it's tail time. We need extra footage! WE NEED EXTRA FOOTAGE! Playing Gex 3 Deep Cover Gecko was truly an adventure. It's really hard to say that it's better than Gex Enter the Gecko because there are a lot of ups and downs of the game. Another downfall is that this is Gex's final installment of the series. 
All of us old fans of the series are still hoping to see Gex 4, but instead, Crystal Dynamics forgot the series and still tried to make a quick buck out of the Tomb Raider series. Overall, I've done my job trying to bring back the magic I had with the Gex series to everybody else who enjoyed the series as much as I did. The game brought great f memories and huge fun factors. That's why I give this game a five fingers out of five. This game is now on the PlayStation Store, and if you guys own the PS3, I recommend that you should buy it now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you really like this review. Stay tuned for my next video review, Dear Avenger 4. But before I do that review, I want to make a quick uh, rant on why isn't Gex 4 seeing the light of day. Till then, see you there, my friends. Peace.